Hey guys, over the weekend, I was falsely accused by some others of taking out Paycheck Protection Program loans, PPP loans, to support sports card investor and to buy sports cards. This is absolutely 100% false. PPP loans were offered by the government in 2020 to help businesses who were affected by the pandemic to be able to continue to pay their employees. And even though some people use PPP loans fraudulently, the vast majority of businesses that took PPP loans use them in the proper way to keep employees getting paychecks and not have to lay off anyone during the pandemic. I own several different businesses. Sports Card Investor is nowhere near the largest business that I own, even though I spend the most time on it because I love it. I love cards and I love the hobby community. I'm very fortunate to get to work on something that I really care about each and every day. Thankfully, Sports Card Investor did not need a PPP loan during the pandemic, nor did we apply for one, nor did we take one. One of my other businesses, a web development and digital marketing agency called 352, got crushed early in the pandemic. 352 builds websites and digital marketing campaigns for a number of clients. And when the pandemic hit, many of 352's clients were affected and cut back on their marketing spend. As a result, 352's revenue plummeted. 352 has more than 50 full-time employees. 352 took out two PPP loans for the sole purpose of paying those employees and keeping the business operating during a time when sales dropped significantly. And the PPP loans helped. I'm proud to say that 352 did not lay off a single employee during the pandemic. In order to take out PPP loans and have them forgiven, 352 had to supply a mountain of paperwork to the government, payroll records, bank records, profit and loss statements, balance sheets, and much more. The government had a clear look at where every dollar was spent and it was all spent for its proper purposes. Some of you have asked, if Sports Card Investor was doing so well, why didn't you move money from Sports Card Investor over to 352? Or why didn't you sell some of your own sports cards? That wasn't an option. 352 and Sports Card Investor are two completely separate businesses with separate ownership structures, different investors, and different partners. Money cannot be moved from one company to another like that, especially when the companies have different ownership structures. I did absolutely nothing wrong to save one of my businesses and its employees during a difficult economic time. So why do I have to sit here and defend this today? Because it's important to me that my employees know the truth, which is that protecting them is always my top priority. So while others are intentionally perpetuating lies about me for the purpose of getting views and gaining notoriety, I am here to set the record straight. Now, I believe that the hobby needs some honest watchdogs. There are bad things that happen in the sports card hobby. There are trimmers, there are scammers, there's shill bidding, there's price manipulation, and there are a host of other shady things that take place. We don't cover that very often on this channel because this channel is where brand new people getting into the hobby most often land first. And I don't want their first exposure to the hobby to be about scams. Because the truth is that while that stuff does happen, it's a very, very small part of what is a great hobby and an awesome community. And while we're not covering much of that on this channel, I appreciate the others that take the time to uncover and call out issues when they, act, when they happen. However, there is a massive difference between calling out real fraud with real evidence and deceptively making false claims or jumping to unsubstantiated conclusions for the purpose of stirring up drama and getting views. Here at Sports Card Investor, we're gonna to continue to focus on the good in the hobby and work hard to make the hobby better. So far this year, we've given out more than 2,000 Card Kids repacks to welcome kids into the hobby. And next year, at our own expense, we'll be setting up and staffing kids' trade zones at several major card shows. So far this year, we posted more than 1,000 videos, posts, and articles informing and entertaining people in the hobby all for free. We continue to make card pricing data more transparent and accessible through our free Sports Card Investor app, and we lower the price of market movers so more people can afford to subscribe and get access to the most powerful pricing and collection tracker in the hobby. 
We feature countless collectors, card shops, and dealers, and entrepreneurs on our channel to give their businesses a boost without charging a dime. And this week, we have a major event to do that even more. This Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time is our virtual holiday card show presented by eBay Collectibles, where we're celebrating everything good in the hobby by bringing out some of the best content creators, some of the best dealers, and some of the best entrepreneurs live onto the show. And we're also giving away more than $20,000 in prizes to those who watch, thanks to our official WAC sponsor, Midwest Cards. I hope you'll be able to enjoy, I hope you'll be able to join us this Tuesday and Wednesday. And I appreciate your support as my team and I continue to work hard to make this great hobby even greater.